Thank you. Uh, I guess it's obvious that the round barrel mound or barrel hugigrat or mohila or tumulus uh, is uh, probably the most common archaeological uh, type, uh, common type of archaeological object covering Europe, where Timothy Dar will identify as Atlantic, Nordic, Central, Mediterranean, and Eastern European barrel regions. Uh, the results I would like to share with you are connected with my country of origin, the Republic of Moldova, which is part of the last one, the Eastern European zone. This study I started together with the, our National Agency for Archaeology of Moldova, and the main uh, task was the monitoring of the burial mounds of Moldova, of the region for their further protection. <laughs> then I expanded the area of research uh, to have more relevant picture, uh, and now the area of study is limited to the territory of so-called historical Bessarabia or Northwest Pontic region uh, and is located between Danube, Prut and Nister rivers. Uh, it consists of western part of uh, Republic of Moldova and Odessa region of Ukraine. Uh, it is known that the earliest barrels uh, appear first of all in the zones of close interaction of various cultural communities. So the North, Northwestern Black Sea region is no exception. And being the most Western periphery of uh, uh, Pontic Caspian Steppe, Northwest coast of Black Sea is surrounded by Carpathian mount, mountains, yeah, uh, uh, Danube River and Black Sea. And this led to the fact uh, uh, that the cultural landscape since uh, early prehistory was influenced by three main factors. Uh, the first one, southeastern, southeast European, or the Balkans, East European, the steppe factor, and Central European, forest steppe, or even forest region. Therefore, the area of interest could be treated during the various periods like uh, frontier or contact zone or the territory where the cultures uh, meet, clash and grapple with each other, often in the context of highly asymmetrical relations of power. And all this led to the fact that uh, this territory has become an archaeological Klondike or the land of the barrels. Um, according to my calculations, using various satellite images like Astrodam and Google Earth and others, almost uh, 11,000 of uh, barrel mounds are located on this territory of Mr. Prout interview with uh, about um, 6,300 on the territory of the Republic of Moldova and uh, about uh, 4,000 Four hundreds on the territory of Ukraine, and there are about uh, 2.5 barrels per uh, 100 square kilometers uh, between this <coughs> and Prut, while the average density of uh, barrel mounds from Moldova is much lower than the um, uh, percentage and the density of the um, Ukrainian part. Um, the concentration of barrels also differs in various regions of Ukraine and Moldova. The maximum density uh, was recorded in southern part. It's obvious because it's steppe. And uh, uh, regions of Moldova and Ukraine. Uh, the minimum density is documented in the central part. It's also obvious for us because it's forest zone. Uh, and is uh, associated with the forest uh, zone of the so-called Kodri of Moldova. And it's uh, clearly seen that the barrel mounds generally follow a um, linear pattern and are stretched in lines up to 20 or even uh, 30 kilometers long and are closely related to the relief located on the ridges, uh, watersheds, on high plateaus along the rivers. Of course, it is impossible to understand how the territory of um, uh, territory surrounding of barrel uh, mounds or barrel grounds is arranged without explaining the role of the barrels in the ancient landscape. 
and on the one hand the barrel mount or the barrel itself uh, could be considered as a social and cultural marker indicating the presence of cultural communities and the boundaries of these communities uh, and on another hand um, on the other hand the reuse of mounts the expansion of these uh, barrel lines in following periods by other cultural communities gave the barrel cemeteries an active mnemonic role in the um, landscape the linear nature of the patterns along which the barrels were cons constructed doesn't exclude the probable connection with the ancient roads marking probably the roots of uh, migrations or season season migrations <coughs> and uh, for the study study of the polygraphy of barrel cemeteries a sort of cities of dead uh, may also reveal uh, some urban patterns for the communities which uh, did not create uh, long-term settlements and most of uh, burial mounds excavated in the research area are up to 100 meters diameter um, with an average size of uh, 36 meter and more than three quarters of all excavated barrels were constructed once. 13% uh, have uh, the second construction level, 6% um, uh, have the third, 3% the fourth. Um, uh, a small number of uh, barrels have uh, five uh, construction levels and there is one exceptional case with uh, seven construction levels. Um, <clears throat> and on average, the number of barrels in one mound is about seven. In two thirds of the excavated mounds, uh, that oh, sorry. in um, um, two thirds of uh, excavated mounds is uh, the number of uh, uh, documented uh, graves is about ten. Um, there are at least 10 barrels without any barrels. Apparently, they were built in the Roman period, in so-called Sarmatian period, and probably for other uh, ritual uh, purposes. Um, more than um, um, 30 barrels in one barrel were recorded in, on the Lower Dniester, it's also steppe region. But the biggest number comes from uh, the southern part of Moldova, but the biggest number comes from Ukraine. So an exceptional example, it was recorded on the lower Dniester of Ukrainian part. It was uh, 163 graves uh, uh, fixed in uh, one barrel. You see it's number 14, it's uh, Mologa barrel ground, barrel number two. Um, the practice of erecting barrels in our region, in Northwest Pontic area, um, appeared probably not later than in uh, 3900, 3800 BC, or even earlier in uh, 5th millennium BC. Later, the barrel uh, became an important part of the funeral practice of the various communities of Bronze Age, Iron Age, Roman period, Middle Ages, uh, and even in modern period of uh, 18th, 19th century AD. And uh, by the way, some of the barrels are used, uh, are still in use in Moldova, because you could see some examples um, of uh, the first one is a monument of the Soviet soldiers. Uh, um, uh, the second one is a music festival around the probably the biggest uh, barrel in Moldova and the third is a modern cemetery, modern Moldavian cemetery in modern Moldavian village, yeah, which lies on the barrel. Um, yeah, it's about uh, contemporary use of, of <laughs> barrels. Um, anyway, we have data on um, about 400 barrels excavated on the right bank territory of Moldova and about 400 barrels uh, for the territory of Ukraine. So uh, the um, uh, total number is about 780 
of the barrel so if we compare it to my uh, previous calculations that's less than seven percent of excavated barrels and um, according to my data two percent of barrel mounts are associated with the initial Neolithic period almost a half belong to early bronze age um, and uh, um, about 10% uh, to the Late Bronze Age, uh, the uh, Iron Age, including the Sivan, Press Sivan, and Sarmatian uh, periods, is less than 3%. Later, the number of funeral complexes increases in Roman time. It's uh, about 7% in Middle Ages, about 11%. But it should be noted that at least 10% or uh, 290 graves due to the absence of grave goods or some characteristic signs um, remain un, uh, un, un identified both culturally and chronologically. And most of the burial mounds, about 40%, belong to so-called Yamna or pit grave culture of early Bronze Age. And, uh, but Yamna leads not only in the absolute number of the graves, um, but also it, in its uh, chronological density. Um, besides the demography, uh, the explanation of this phenomenon um, probably lies also in the fact that the barrel was the only burial tradition for the Yamna um, culture. And the proportion of barrels of other cultures doesn't exceed 10%. Yeah, the late medieval nomads take the second place with 12%. The third uh, with 8% goes to Middle Bronze Age, uh, followed by Sarmatians with 7 and catacomb culture of Early Bronze Age with uh, also 7%. And uh, the statistics uh, regarding um, to the primary barrels slightly differs, and at least two cases are known. Uh, known when uh, the barrels were constructed into a um, natural feature, like a natural hill, uh, the feature of natural region, and at least um, 20 cases that uh, the primary barrel was impossible to identify. But the number of barrels constructed in the Neolithic period is bigger. The proportion of the primary burials of the Early Bronze Age is also higher compared to the secondary burials. It's about 60%, more than half. But in the middle, uh, Bronze and Late Bronze Age is lower. So the percentage of the primary burials for the Iron Age is about seven. Roman time is also same, the seven, and is higher in comparison with the um, secondary uh, graves. And the bulk of burials was erected by the burials of uh, Yamna culture. Uh, so it's about 56% uh, followed by a wide margin uh, the Sarmatians with 8% and Sivans about 5%. Uh, and other communities like Late Bronze Age or Middle Bronze Age doesn't exceed uh, 3%. Thus, uh, we could allocate two main periods of the construction of the burial mounds, the Early Bronze Age and the so-called Sivan Sarmatian period. Anyway, it should be noted that the burial activity of the Sivans and Sarmatians is noticeably lower compared to the Early Bronze Age. Uh, well, uh, the preliminary data on the moundscape of the, of the territory between Danube, Prud, and Dniester rivers uh, show the exceptional unevenness uh, of the burial distribution, chronological, cultural and, of course, spatial one. Uh, the next steps of this research are to exemplify how the funeral landscape of Novdes Pontic area was organized to reveal the patterns in their construction of the barrows and using them later by other communities. Or, in other words, how the prehistoric and protohistoric Communities shape the natural landscape according to the ideological beliefs uh, and how the very idea of uh, tumulus 
was uh, changing uh, during the existence of this uh, cultural practice. Uh, thank you.